Well, it was an arresting moment on the second day of the World Cup. That's Monday. Iranian players refusing to sing their national anthem in their pool match against England. It's dominating the front pages today. So our press reviewer, Diptika Laurent, is here to tell us more. Well, Aaron, the Iranian football team did uh, refuse, to, did stay silent during their national anthem in their match against England uh, on Monday to show their anger at their government's crackdown on protesters. Uh, protests have, of course, engulfed Iran for the past few months after the death of Masa Amini, a woman in who was in the custody of Iran's so-called morality police. Now, the papers are really paying tribute to the Iranian football team today. This is Liberation, the front page of the French newspaper, which evokes uh, uh, its weapon of silence. And you see that really striking image there on the front page of an Iranian football fan with uh, the colors of his flag streaming down his cheeks like tears. Uh, you also have uh, the French language paper uh, from Lebanon, Lorient Le Jour, which speaks of uh, what it calls a, a ch uh, the, the defiance of the Iranian footballers uh, in, in the face of the regime in Iran, uh, uh, saying it has actually, uh, this gesture has really earned them newfound popularity with protesters back home. Uh, there's a really a uh, striking image also from a uh, striking headline rather from USA Today. Uh, here it says uh, Iranians players courage put other nations to shame and in, in that uh, in, in smaller print there it says in a world that stands for nothing one team risks everything. The USA Today uh, paper really lauding Iranian footballers for their courage. No doubt though you won't see the, those kind of uh, applauding uh, those kind of congratulatory headlines from the Iranian press. In fact, they're really focusing on the results of Iran's match yesterday. Um, uh, they call it a, a dreadful result, a 6-2 routing of Iran by England. Uh, time to move on, the paper says, rather cryptically on its front page. Now, there are a lot of reactions to that by certain teams to not wear a controversial armband or what some see as controversial in order to protest against discrimination. That's right. It's on the front page of Le Soir today. Uh, those teams, those European teams, caved into pressure by FIFA, who uh, had threatened them with yellow cards if they... Uh, did go ahead and wear those anti-discrimination armbands. So uh, it's what uh, Le Soir, the Belgian paper, calls the armband of discord. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Daily Mirror, the British uh, paper, uh, speaks of pride and prejudice, really juxtaposing England's uh, victory against Iran with, uh, with that decision uh, not to wear those armbands, uh, contrasted with that courageous move by the Iranian football team not to sing their national anthem. Uh, another British paper, Metro Today, hailing the bravery of the Lions, the Lions being the nickname for the Iranian football team, while Morton Moreland uh, is focusing more on, he's a cartoonist for the Times of London, he's focusing on the Three Lions, that's a nickname of the English football side, uh, who you see here, this third lion here, more uh, less of a lion, perhaps more of a pussycat, definitely some criticism towards that decision not to wear those armbands. All right, uh, Deepti, we're going to move on to something completely different now, and that's uh, one of France's most emblematic food charities, the Resto du Coeur, launching its campaign today. That's right. Uh, Le Resto du Coeur is, uh, it was launched back in 1985 by French comedian Coluche. It was aiming uh, to, and it has done for the past uh, nearly four decades, to distribute food to the needy and homeless in France. So every year around November, they launch their annual uh, campaign, if you like. This year, the charity has though been shocked by the growing numbers of people who are uh, who are requesting help from Les Restes du Coeur. Um, about 12% increase uh, since last year. It's a result of successive crises. That's what uh, the French paper of Aminut says. Uh, COVID-19, but also inflation and now rising gas prices, which is which have driven some families in some cases to have to choose between heating and food, Aaron. Uh, we're going to go from extreme poverty, Dipti, then to extreme wealth, and if I may, maybe even extreme greed. That's because a new vote has designated the world's worst boss. That's right. This vote was conducted by the International Trade Union Confederation, Aaron, during their annual congress that was held in Melbourne this year. And despite 
uh, rather stiff competition. Uh, Peter Hebblethwaite, he's the CEO of P&O Ferries. Uh, well, he took the uh, very undesirable top prize of world's worst boss. Here he is in this picture here. Uh, followed uh, second place was given to Jeff Bezos and uh, third place to Qantas CEO Alan Joyce. Uh, Hebblethwaite became Britain's uh, most hated boss after illegally sacking 786 seafarers in a pre-recorded Zoom call which clearly breached uh, UK laws. Uh, he even said that he would do it again. So one might say it was it's a pretty well-deserved world's worst bus title for this man, Aaron. Well-deserved indeed. Dick, Diptika Laurent, thank you very much for the press review.